All right, hello and welcome to the Drum History Podcast. I'm your host, Bart Vanderzee, and today we are on location with Mr. Michael Cavanaugh, a.k.a. Cavs. Cavs, welcome to the podcast. Thank you, thank you. It's an absolute honor. Yes. Thank you very much. The honor is all mine. Um, we're doing one mic. This might sound a little bit different, but uh, it's all good. So we are in Newport, Kentucky right now at the Megacorp Pavilion. We're going to see um, King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard play tonight. Uh, so Cavs, how is the tour going so far? It's been awesome. Uh, I don't know how many shows we've done, but um, I feel like right now we're just sort of like where we're, we're kind of like we're, the cobwebs have been blown off um, and um, we're really like, you know, um, really into the rhythm. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I want to say to people maybe who if they don't know, I mean, you guys are a massive band, but if they haven't heard you you are like one of the most prolific, incredible, uh, not up and coming. I mean, you guys have like 26 albums or something like that. It's yeah, <laughs> yeah, pretty yeah. incredible. Yeah. You release a ton of albums, but you as a drummer are, I mean, once people hear you, I think that you quickly become one of their favorite drummers. Um, how would you, it's probably a weird question, but how would you describe your drumming style? What, you know, your influences, all that good stuff uh, yeah. to make, make you the drummer you are. Yeah, well, it's like, I, I feel like my style, my style is like, um, like everything, yeah, you know, really kind of thing. yeah, I don't, um, at, at the end of the day, I'm, you know, just like a rock drummer, you know, but, um, but, uh, because all the records we release, um, are so different, yeah. um, yeah. I'm able to tap into a lot of different influences, um you know we make jazz albums we make thrash albums um like prog records and um that's the best thing about being in king gears is that you know i can i can draw on all of my influences you know you guys though you're playing it's so hard to explain what if to someone who isn't aware of what you know who king is is it's like well just check out this album and then that album and then this album because they're all so very different but yeah. Um, who was your favorite drummer growing up? I know that's probably a stock kind of dumb question, yeah, yeah, but like, yeah. really, what? Who was your first drummer? Like, ever John Bonham or whoever? Who who got you obsessed and loving the drums? Man, it was probably like, um, it was probably Chad Smith, yeah. and like, and Taylor Hawkins, because at the time, you know, they were the big rock bands when I was growing up. But when and when you introduced when you get introduced to drums, it's like, you know, they're the bands that are like real big at the moment. And they're like, they were the, they were the bands that were touring, you know, when I was growing up and, um, and stuff like that. But, but then, yeah, you quickly realize that that's not where it starts. You know, when your drumming knowledge, um, matures. Yeah. You quickly realize that it doesn't start with those guys, you know, and then when you go back and then, yeah, and then when I discovered Bottom, you know, it was like yeah. kind of like, you know, it's yeah, all over. Yeah, after it's that. all over. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think the cool thing that I've learned is about how, like you say, your favorite drummer then was Chad Smith, but it's like, well, who was Chad Smith's favorite drummer? Well, exactly. And yeah. then who was that drummer's favorite drummer? Yeah. Bottom's favorite drummer was like Gene Krupa. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and that's and that's like me. And then I yeah. And then you go back even further with all like the big band drummers, like um, like Louis Belson is like yeah, um, a, you know. A, yeah i yeah huge influence and um so yeah like louis belson with the double kick and yeah. you know adding it into like big band form like yeah stuff like that but yeah so it's it's, it's funny because it you kind of when you start playing drums you know it starts at that kind of point with your like you know your chad smiths and your taylor hawkins oh, yeah. and, and all that every but, kid's favorite drum yeah but yeah. then but then it doesn't take long to kind of mature and um and and um, and go back and see where it all started, you know? Yeah. 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 Um, now while we're up here, we should talk, there are many great videos on YouTube, which I'll put some in the description of this video mm -hmm. that go, I know modern drummer has one that does an awesome rundown of your kit, Yeah. but do you want to maybe just tell us a little bit of what we have here yeah, and then sure. people can go into more detail in the other ones, but, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. beautiful CNC acrylics, yes. right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yep. So this one, um, this is my the newest one that CNC have built for me, and um, uh, I used it on the last tour earlier this year in Europe, 
And then this is the first time I've played this in um, in the US. Um, and a couple of new additions. That, yeah, all I guess all all dream symbols. Yeah. Um, yeah, those guys just sort me out, and the symbols are like amazing, and um, huge range for a, for a small symbol company as well. And they're on all your recordings too. Yes, because yeah. like they, yeah, the drums on the album sound incredible. I mean, and the symbols, I should say. Yep. Concert toms all over. Big concert tom guy. Yeah. Well, that's the first. This is the first uh, kit that I've had concert toms made. Um, so it's. It's mainly just the oh, well, it's just these three. So it's the the rack tom has no bottom head, and the floor tom has no bottom head. Yep. And this little um, pancake drum here is like an eighteen by five, five, five and a half or something. Hmm. But um, yeah, that is, that's a new addition actually. Love it. Yeah. Um, this is cool. The Roots EQ. Yeah, I don't know. Gus Gaspard, my drum tech, just put that on there. Kind of like it just fattens it up. Yeah. You know? um, it's like drum dampening is kind of like mouse traps, where there's like ten thousand variations of exactly. the same thing, yeah. but like the snare weight on the snare and stuff, yep. and the little uh, you know uh, dots you have on there. Yep. It's cool to see how many ways people can do something yep. similar. Yeah, you know? for sure. Yeah, I got um, this snare as well. Uh, is CNC made this to match the kit? So this um, this yellow sparkle. So yeah, this is this is all new. This yellow sparkle matches the inlay of the uh, kick drum there. Cool, which is really cool. Um, but yeah, I, I also have like backup snares as well because yeah, um, I mean you got it, you know. You got a Dynasonic yeah. snare there. Yeah, yeah. So um, Gaspar just got that for me in Nashville, and um, it's been sick. Yeah, so I kind of just like change it up. Is that a new Dynasonic? It's a new one, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, the new ones. But they're, yeah, they're made with, like, the dampener on the inside Oh, as well. cool, okay. Yeah, and then the, the other one that I use um, uh, the most is the Ludwig, like, Jazz Fest. Okay, cool. Um, but that, like, again, the, the, the remake. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. And it's got the white painted, like, inlay. And, nice, um, nice. And uh, the dampener and everything. So all those, yeah, a lot of the, like, yeah, with... Um, the Rogers and the and the and the Ludwig, like the the way they're building the new ones is 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 kind of cool. You know? I think, if I remember correctly, Bill Dedimore from Pork Pie is uh, heavily involved in the new uh, Rogers. Okay, so he's one of those guys where it's like sort of like, oh yeah, Bill was involved with that. Yeah, and yeah. it's like, oh, that's why it's good. Oh, there you go. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure yeah. he he has a lot yeah. to do with the new Rogers. Yeah, right. Yeah, Roto Toms as well. Rotos. Yep, love the Rotos. Yeah, yeah. These are these are fun. I used to have I used to have a few more. But um, I kind of cut back a bit because I needed some room for some more symbols. And, um, and yeah, I do have. They're not set up, but I do have like a uh, electronics that oh, go cool. here. Yeah, um, yeah. But um, yeah, uh, they're not set up for tonight because we're not doing any of the electronic stuff. Sure. But um, yeah, I have some like 1980s like Roland um, PD31 or something. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, there's there's four inputs, so um, each edge one, two, three, and four. Oh, cool. Yeah, so if you got two, you get you know eight eight yeah. samples. Yeah, yeah, zones or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, Five thousand pedals, DW on. Do you prefer two bass drums as opposed to a double kick pedal? Yes, that's the way to go. Yeah, well, yeah. So when we recorded in Fe- in Festa Rat's Nest, I played with a double kick pedal with one kick drum, and um, and yeah, that was like me kind of getting into like really starting to like practice double kick yeah and um and and it was it was sweet but then as soon as i started playing with two kick drums automatically i like i got better Hmm. it was weird yeah it's because it's like a rebound thing and um i don't know a different feel to each one i think so yeah Yeah. and um and the tension is pretty much the same on, on the heads um but i think i think just yeah, just having them having them um, like separate, and the beaters aren't really playing really fast. Like I don't know, sometimes one beater can like dampen, and then the other one. But it's I don't like, know. It's just like my technique. No, but it's, it's like, like it's like being on a trampoline where you yeah. double bounce. Something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, like, it's like my technique was just like I don't know. It wasn't very good on a double kick pedal. But, but then, it's better on this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And it's like a lot stronger, and it's I cooler. Kinda, 
Yeah. It's subliminally, it's <laughs> yeah. just a cooler thing to do. Yeah, yeah, it's all aesthetic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, um, but no, like, because, and a lot of the double kick stuff I'm doing is just like, you know, like motorhead style, you know, like rolling double kick. Yeah, yeah. But da, 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 da. Yeah, there's not too much kind of like, you know, really intricate stuff that you see a lot of like, you know, metal drummers do these days, which most, you know, most of the metal drummers these days are just using like double kick pedal on one, yeah, on one, um, kick drum but then also just having a second one there anyway or having four the bass drums oh, that yeah. are like fake and <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah e- which is Eloy, nothing wrong with it Eloy yes style. yes yeah, yeah. which is cool it, yeah it is cool i love it I have nothing against that it's 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 mad yeah but um but yeah no i like i like them too hey guys this episode is brought to you by dream symbols as you can tell from watching or listening to this dream symbols are incredible i have loved them on every single king gizzard album i've heard um, that's kind of the sound of calves. Um, so if you like that sound, you can get your own dream symbols by visiting dreamsymbols.com and order from them directly. So you can cut out the middleman and get an even better price because you're getting them directly from uh, Dream. So I think Cavs uses a mix of the Bliss, Eclipse, and Energy symbols, um, and he kind of mixes and matches and has a really cool setup. So if you want to get them, check out dreamsymbols.com. And again, thank you to Dream Symbols for sponsoring this. I went to the show and then messaged uh, my friends at Dream, who are longtime sponsors of the show, um, and saying, man, they sounded good. And it just worked out to have them um, sponsor this episode because Dream is such a big part of Cavs sound. So um, thanks to Dream for sponsoring this. Check out dreamsymbols.com. And don't forget about the recycle program they do. That is super cool, and you can get uh, an even better price on your Dream Symbols. So hope you enjoy the rest of the episode. So having so many albums, so many songs, solo stuff that you've done, which I think is incredible. That's how I originally started talking to you is I heard your solo album and I was like, hey dude, this is awesome. I'm listening, I think I had a, a baby. There's always a baby involved, yeah, but, yeah. but like, but it was like, I'm listening to this with my son and it's really cool and that's how we started talking. But yeah, with so many albums, with so many songs, how do you like keep it all straight? Or do you kind of make your set list and work on those songs and then, you know, because I assume you don't remember every single song for 26 albums. and No, no. So are you talking about when we play live? When you play live. Yeah. 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 Oh, man. So we, we have like, um, yeah, obviously like a lot of songs. And I think we have like probably like maybe like. 200 over 200 songs that we actually can play live wow and um and yeah so there's a lot of just like because the and but also like uh when we play them live you know we jam and stuff that's like whatever that's all improv but when we play the actual songs live the um they're like a different version kind of thing oh yeah sure yeah you kind of just i kind of got to always remember sort of what i um like what feel I used when we played this song last live because it worked better than on the oh, recording yeah. And, yeah. and stuff like that. So remembering that as well as the songs, you know, it's it's tough, but it's also like, you know, you get to a venue and you just sit in the green room, you may as well be like trying to like, you know, learn learn some songs. And I think we're, go- we're going to play some old songs tonight that we haven't played in a while. So cool. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, literally sound checks are our rehearsal. Oh, that's <laughs> awesome. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah Let's yeah. talk about T2JD a yeah. little bit uh, yeah. before I let you go here. Um, explain what it is. I've posted the video on my social media, but yeah. what was the background around that? It, it was an amazing drum piece that you created and mm-hmm. filmed. Uh, it was, it's just... I love seeing when drummers take the initiative to do that and create a piece for themselves. How did that come to be? Cool. Thank you. That's very nice. Yeah. Um, um, so, yeah, the director, um, John, who shot it, he's a uh, really good friend of ours, um, PHC Films. He, um, you know, we'd speak about, you know, doing a drum film, you know, late at night parties and stuff like that and be like you know it'd be sick to just film something cool and then the idea of having a camera on a track going around the drums just seemed like uh it was kind of thing that kind of seemed like it had been done but i also hadn't seen it in just like a drum solo form i'd seen like live at pompeii nick nick mason the, the giant dolly track but never seen it with just a drummer yeah just but just just a kid exactly so um yeah and then um so i 
like my approach was basically we had uh we had about 10 minutes or 11 minutes of film and um i don't know i think the track goes for maybe eight minutes or something so yeah my approach was to just um literally just uh like i kind of just saw it in uh picture just sort of three sections kind of thing and i had no idea of like how long each bit was i was just like in the moment but it was like because if it had gone over the 11 minutes you know the film you know it'll cut. oh but really yeah oh, so i, I had to kind okay. of yeah i kind of make sure i didn't go over um and yeah i think we got it like maybe it was like second take or something and um and it was it was literally just fully improvised yeah yeah i did i all i knew is that i wanted to do uh i wanted to do uh three different sections and um yeah start yeah. off slow like build and then i wanted to have a really groovy part and then i wanted to have something that was like really heavy and um really energetic and um and loud yeah yeah so mission accomplished yeah well. i mean i think it was awesome and for someone to be doing again for in a to be in a band that's releasing usually what maybe two albums a year mm, or yeah. three yeah more? Yeah, till, yeah till three yeah. um to then have like solo projects yeah drum videos and mm. it's just incredible there's no excuse to not for other people who are like i just don't have time it's like yeah yeah you know calves can do it yeah yeah <laughs> and yeah. two kids and so. with two kids i mean i have three kids now and it's and our we both have seven month old babies and it's yeah, like yeah Man, it's no joke. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> no, I, I'll, I definitely want to work on another drumming album um, sometime soon when I get when I get the chance. Um, a lot of people have asked me about that, and I will eventually. I've just um, we've just been recording like um, a lot with gears, and yeah, I'm just kind of putting all my creativity into gears stuff at the moment. Um, but yeah, when when we have another another little break from giz recording and touring i'll definitely yeah get some more like grooves going yeah yeah love it um well i think think the drum community is a special thing yeah i mean really like definitely just there's something i mean guitarists bassists whatever they have stuff too but there's something about drummers and the history of it yeah and just knowing it's one of i've been told it's not the oldest instrument someone was like it's the flute yeah, like, yeah. Oh, okay yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> all right but so just the history of the drums brings us all together. And I know you are very interested that in that mm -hmm. and love it like everyone else. So I think it's cool for you to take the time to talk to me, put your, to put yourself out there with this. Yeah. Um, the latest album is flight B seven forty one, Correct. Mm -hmm. And it is awesome. I've been listening to it nonstop oh, at work over the last man. couple of weeks yeah. and, uh, they're all good. I think they're all good. So, um, everyone can check you guys out, check out King gizzard everywhere. You guys are on all the platforms and everything. So, yeah. All right, so Cavs is going to now, as we're wrapping up the conversation, and I'm here with my brother Spencer, who's filming, um, and, and Cavs is going to show us some stuff. We're going to hop down there and film a little bit, and we are super stoked for the show. So, Cavs, thank you, my friend, for taking the time to do this. Thank it's you. It's a pleasure. Thank you very much, guys. It's an honor. Thank you. Thank you.